everyone, my name is Chloe and today I'm here to do my second half or first half of November wrap up. November has flown by and you guys, I am shocked to say it was like an awesome first half of the month reading. And the reason why is because I made two projects for myself to have two different vlogs go up. And when I set a project for myself or when I'm in a readathon, usually I am just like a go getter about it. If I set a goal, by golly, I am going to get it. And so that has been a big, big help for me this month. So as always, I'm going to go into the statistics and then I will just go um, give you a little rundown of the books uh, in the order that I read them and we'll just go from there. So in the first half of November, so the 1st to the 15th, I read 18 books, which like I said, is a shocker to me. I'm doing this um, on November 20th and I'm like, wait, I read that much? Wow. Um the average page length was 284 pages, so I did read quite a few shorter books, which you will see as I go along. Um, I read 5,107 pages, 340 pages a day, which like, what? Um, but I also read some really good stuff. So I read 11 novels, five chapter books, one graphic novel, and one poetry collection. So those um, different formats also help, of course, like with those numbers being a little bit higher. I read 12 adult and six middle grade. Six were from my shelf and 12 were from somewhere else. Um, so where did I read all these books? Six were from Libro FM. And if you guys are not a part of Libro FM, I always have my code linked down below. Um, lovely bro fm and i really like dived in deep this month um i read four from libby three from netgalley three on my shelf and two from the library so i did 12 audiobooks five physical books and one ebook um nine were new release and nine were backlist so that's kind of even stevens then i read four contemporary three nonfiction, three mystery thriller two women's fiction two sci-fi fantasy two romance and two historical so as always all over the board um, and then as far as star ratings go, I had two, two and a half stars, which is like really low for me. Um, three, three stars, seven, three and a half stars, five, four stars, and one five star, which is also really rare for me to have a five star. So the average was 3.53, which is about what it always is right around that three and a half. I'd recommend it. Not the best thing, but, um, I would definitely recommend it. So now let's just get into the books. I'll just go in the order I read them. So I read Karen's Prize by Ann and Martin. So this is um, number, gosh, eight, nine, something. I don't know what number. In the Babysitter's Club Little Sister series. And um, I gave it four stars. This is about Karen entering some spelling bees. And it was good. I liked it. Um, Karen's definitely feeling like a lot. So I'm we're kind of taking a break right now. And I'm not mad about it. But... Then um, the next couple books that I read were for my NetGalley vlog that I did. So I will link that down below where I go way more in depth about um, what I thought about these books. But for now, I'll just tell you the name and what I gave them. So The Lindbergh Nanny by Mariah Fredericks. I gave four stars. This was a really good. I just said I was only going to tell you the name and what I gave it. But this one, I feel like maybe I need to give four and a half because this was a fictionalized um, fictionalized account of what could have happened with the Charles Lindbergh baby. Um, he was kidnapped. There's a whole, like, it's a, it's based on a true story, and it's told from the nanny's perspective, and there's a little bit of ambiguity about what actually happened. Like, there was somebody convicted in real life, but was that right? There's some conspiracy theories, and so this is just a fictional take on that, and I actually really liked it. Um, the Daughter-in-Law by Shalini Bolin. I gave four stars. Shalini Bolin, I feel like, is very reliable for just kind of easy thrillers. Um, then I read Karen's Ghost, which is another in the Ann and Martin series. Um, and I gave that one three and a half stars. Karen thinks she's got a ghost in her dad's house named Ben Brewer. And now we have kind of joked in our house, um, like, if I didn't do that, I didn't do that. And we said, must have been Ben Brewer. And um, the girls think it's kind of funny. Then um, Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard. This one I gave three and a half stars. This was also a part of that Met Galley vlog. And um, this one was just, it was good. If you're really into the film industry, I bet you would like it more. But it's about a woman who is um, kind of a has-been actress, gets this lead role in this um, horror movie. And the things, it, the horror movie is about a woman who is reading a horror book and the things start happening in her real life and then they start happening in the filming also. So it's kind of meta, kind of like, wait, what, who, what? Um, but I liked it. Then um, that's it for the NetGalley vlog. So then I read Where Are the Children by Mary Higgins Clark. And this is Mary Higgins Clark debut novel. And so it was written in 1970 something. And I gave it four stars. I really liked it. It is about this woman who um, has two kids and they go missing and are found dead. And 
she is always kind of a suspect, but there was never enough to like convict her. And so then she's married again, has a new family with two kids. And those kids go missing, and it seems to be a repeat. So we figure out what the heck happened the first time and what happened now. Where are her kids? Can she save them? Was she a part of it? All of that. Um, The reason I give it four stars and not more is because it was very short, maybe 275 pages or something. And so I really wanted more from it, especially in regards to the villain and all of that. But it was good. Um, then I went on a middle grade kick that started really strong. So I did vlog, um, I did do a middle grade vlog that I don't know if you'll see before this or after this. So I'm not going to go too in depth on these, but it started with Tilly and the Book Wonders by Anna James. And I gave this four stars, which maybe even needs to be more. It's about a little girl who discovers that, um, characters can come out of books to visit her and she can go in books to visit them. It was really, really cute. Um, then I... Then I read The Inn on Sweet Briar Lane, which is not a middle grade. This is an adult romance um, by Jeannie Chen about this woman who is trying to save her family's inn. And next across the street is this guy putting in this bar in honor of his military friend who has died. And so he is making a ton of noise, just being rude and obnoxious, and it's driving away her guests. And so it's kind of an enemies to lovers thing. I don't love enemies to lovers. I'm a really hard sell on that trope. So this one was just three stars for me. Um, but it was, if you love that trope, it was maybe worth checking out. Then I started um, a, a Libro FM vlog. So I will link all these vlogs down below where you can hear more of my thoughts. But I listened to Have I Told You This Already by Lauren Graham. I love her. And this is um, maybe her second memoir. And this one I enjoy just as much as the first. Well, not just as much, but I enjoy quite a bit. It's about her, like, um, moving from New York or from New York to L.A. Yeah, New York to L.A. And her, like, getting into the the tv industry and all of that kind of stuff and it's just told with her same fast talking charm funniness um some parts of her are really relatable some parts of her i think would drive me nuts um she's very type b and i'm very type a but also that extrovertedness is something i really relate to so i enjoyed it and would definitely recommend you pick it up on audio because she reads it herself then I read The Vanderbreakers by Karen Van, Karen Yan Glasser. Um, and I gave this some three and a half stars. This was a middle grade book about a family called The Vanderbreakers. And it was good. It was just, um, just not the best thing for me. And I kind of started to get out of the middle grade mood. Then I read Karen's Surprise by Anna Martin and gave it three stars. Um, I did not like this one at all. It was, Karen was really up in the bratty level and just not into it. Then for the Libro FM vlog, I continued Book Lovers by Emily Henry and um, gave that three and a half stars. Then the stories we tell, um, Every Piece of Your Story Matters by Joanna Gaines. I go back and forth. I gave this three and a half stars. I really liked parts of it and really felt like she was kind of phoning it in or just staying kind of like superficial and like, not not superficial but almost like artificial depth of like this is what depth should sound like this is the pc way to be like deep and vulnerable as opposed to actually being deep and vulnerable um i'm not sure so three and a half stars on that then uh and yet which is poems by kate bear i gave three and a half stars their poems all about motherhood and womanhood and i just love listening to people read their own poetry top notch um then bookish people by susan cole i gave that one two and a half stars maybe even needs to be two stars it was about this bookstore but it went off on so many like weird tangents and really didn't have a whole lot of point and it just was not for me and then um the last one for that libro fm vlog was speak um finding your Find your voice, trust your gut, and get from where you are to where you want to be or something like that by Tunde. And I, she is a Peloton instructor, and I love this book. This is my five-star read, and it was so good. It, she talks about her, like, body image issues. Um, her family is African, and just the different cultural um, norms and expectations around bodies and female bodies and what beauty is like. And then also just how, like... You, I mean, she got rejected as a as a instructor for Peloton, and she did not give up. And now she is uh, very famous, um, and she's known for her arms, and that's something she's always been really insecure about. And it's just a really interesting story, and I found it really motivating. And then the last one that I read is Witches of Brooklyn by Sophie uh, Escabase, maybe. And this is a middle grade graphic novel. I gave two and a half stars about this little girl who, um, her has to go live with her aunt and finds out that she's a witch. 
And this pop star comes to their house with this red face. She has this really red face and she needs help getting rid of it. And so they kind of figure it out and whatever. Well, I just didn't love anything about this. I also did read it with my daughter and I've discovered that reading graphic novels aloud is not pleasant for me. <laughs> so maybe that's why. Maybe if I would have read it by myself, it would have taken like 20 minutes and I would have been good. Um, but I just didn't like it. It was boring. And like some of the humor was not... I just didn't get it. I mean, it just wasn't for me. Like, I got it, but it wasn't for me. So, that is everything that I read. I definitely think the second half is going to be slower. Um, I have mentioned this, and I'm kind of batch filming today, and I've mentioned in a couple of videos, but I uh, broke my ankle pretty severely yesterday, so I am immobile, um, which may mean a lot more reading, but it also, like, has impacted our lives a lot because everything I can't do, I have to kind of armchair coach Jeremy to do it or somebody to do it, and it's stressful. So um, I don't know what the next half of November will look like, but I will see you at the end of the month and let you know. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if you're interested in any, and we'll see you in the next one.